Well, hello. This is Tyler with Diesel Geek, and today we will be demonstrating the installation of the Panzer heavy duty aluminum skid plate and full metal jacket side skirt kit on a Mark IV Golf. All right, before we get started, we'll go over the contents of the kit. First up is our Panzer aluminum skid plate, 5052 aluminum, laser cut, 316 inch thick, super burly. Next, we have two of our forward mounting posts. Steel, powder coated, plug in the top so no corrosion occurs. Awesome part. Included is the free uh, rib nut installation tool and our bag of hardware. Also available is the full metal jacket aluminum side skirt set. Uh, great option uh, if you either want that extra protection or you don't have uh, the factory side skirts anymore. Um, and that also comes with its associated hardware. Okay, so this is the tool set that we're gonna need to install the Panzer skid plate on your Mark IV. Um, you'll need a T25 for removing the factory belly pan and side skirts. Uh, you'll need some grease for preparing the bolts for rib nut install. You'll need a common screwdriver, quarter inch dry, or excuse me, a common screwdriver, quarter inch wide tip. Um, Torque wrench is nice to have. Those rib nuts torque to about 30 foot pounds. You're gonna need a ratchet. You'll need a 17, uh, and you'll need a 17 that wobbles. So you can either go with this type of wobble extension, or if you have a fancy U-joint socket, that's nice too. You'll need an extension. Um, now, if you have a turbo car, you're gonna need to be able to uh, have the tooling to disconnect that lower charge pipe that runs to the bottom of the intercooler. For the later TDIs, you do that with a hose pick. For the 1.8T, uh, a nut driver. For the early TDIs, it's a, um, it's a big spring clamp. Um, and then that charge pipe is secured to the, to the frame rail with a 10 millimeter nut. Um, <clears throat> if you're going to be modifying your stock side skirts, uh, you'll need a hacksaw to make a couple of easy cuts there. Um, if you're going to be uh, installing our full metal jacket aluminum side skirt set, you're going to need a long extension and a uh, wobbly 3 8 as well as a short um, either 10 or 3 8 open end wrench. Um, that's about it. Uh, let's, uh, let's get to work. All right, so getting started, we've got our gold zinc plated rib nuts, custom made for us. Um, our M10 by 35 cap screws and several M10 fender washers. Um, the first thing we'll need to do is prep these rib nuts for installation. And what we do is we take about that much grease and really you can just go ahead and apply that to every bolt and then drop a washer on there and then insert that through the rib tool and thread your rib nut on. And so what we'll do once we get underneath the car is we're gonna tighten this, which is gonna draw the top of this rib nut down and cause this part with the hashes here to flare in the frame of the car and that's going to create secure mounting points for both our skid plate and our forward brackets. So without further ado, let's get rolling. Hello again. Now that we've removed our factory plastic belly pan, we'll get to work on these side skirts. On the turbo cars, you'll have a charge pipe that's in the way that you'll have to contend with first. So this clip down and remove the nut back here. And then we just pull down in the back and apart up front, bungee that out of the way. We'll have two of these little speed nuts. The easiest way to address these is you just insert a screwdriver here and wind them on off of there. Take care of the one up front 
and then you can just pull the side skirt down out of the car. Next, we'll work on the rib nuts. All right, so we're gonna start at the uh, subframe here and we're gonna insert a rib nut in this hole, this hole, and this hole. We already have our rib nut prepped and installed on our installation tool. We're just gonna start here. What we need to do is simultaneously press up on this rib tool and tighten the bolt. This is really the trickiest part of the job. You want to keep an eye on the head of that rib nut and make sure it stays flush in the subframe. And once it starts to mushroom in the subframe, it'll be easier to work with. And just go ahead and tighten and keep tightening until it starts to firm up. That's just starting to firm up and we'll just go a little bit farther. If you want to take some of the guesswork out of it, you can throw a torque wrench on there once it starts to firm up. And uh, final torque these to 30 foot pounds. That one's good. And once we're finished, you can spin the nut out. Now we have a nice solid threaded mounting point for our skid plate. Alternatively, you can run these in with an impact, um, and that is a little bit easier. However, you run a much higher risk of stripping the rib nuts. So if you're gonna run them with an impact, what you need to do is hold this thing up flush, as we showed before, and tighten it. And as soon as you see the socket slow down, you need to let off and follow up by hand. So that's starting to slow down. So now we'll go in and finish this guy by hand. So we'll do this final one here and then we'll move on to the four up front on the frame rails. All right, so now I'm moving to the frame rail. We've got two rib nuts at once and we've got it set up so that this relief in the tool clears that stud. I'm gonna start up front because we can get straight onto that one. This one, that other rib nut's gonna keep us, keep it from spinning. So we just have to push up and tighten it. So this one, on the turbo cars, we've got an intercooler bracket that's in the way. And on the VR6, there's a radiator here that uses a very similar bracket. And so we need to use either a, a U-joint style socket or a, a wobble-headed extension. Now, once those are tight, we can just take this all out. And now we can move on to the driver's side of the car. Okay, so same story on the driver's side. Um, just take our rib tool, pop it in there. On the Beetle, there's a power steering cooler over here that's almost in the way, but it's not in the way. So just press up. Next, we're gonna come in with our mounting bracket. The leg leans forward. Um, there's a plug here and it's gonna press into that stud. We 
basically want to bottom these out. And then back up about two full turns. So we've got this floppy post there and that movement there is gonna make it easy to align the plate uh, when we go to do the initial install. So now we're gonna move back over to the passenger side. Bottom out, back up a couple turns. Now, if you opted for the full metal jacket side skirt kit, we'll just need to prepare those for installation right quick. We'll take these fold over nuts and just install them along the bottom edges here in the ovalized holes. And then on the driver's side, side skirt, use our bolt with the little washer into our angle bracket here. And you want it roughly, roughly parallel with this fold here and just snug it by hand. Now we'll go under the car and put these on. Now we're going to install the passenger side full metal jacket and don't forget to install the plugs. So we'll maneuver it up here and we're going to get this fold underneath the mounting bracket while at the same time we maneuver that slot onto that post. And then we'll just slide this all the way forward and then we're going to take our sheet nut here and just get that guy started. And so we want to push out a little bit so that this side skirt is right up against the mounting bracket and all the way forward. And what's going to hold this in place is we're going to come in and we're going to tighten the mounting bracket after we've done the initial install on the skid plate and it's gonna lock everything together. Now we'll move on to the driver's side. Okay, so for this side, we'll need to maneuver this into position. And with the side skirt all the way back, we'll start the other sheet nut on the stud from the inside. Once that's started, we'll just toenail the bracket underneath this guy, this mounting post here, and we'll bring this side skirt all the way forward. And we really just want this to hang here, stable enough that it doesn't fall off, but loose enough that we can adjust everything. So now we're gonna do our initial plate install. I like to start with the rear center bolt and we'll insert it here. We take the one extra washer and it goes on top of the plate here because the subframe is slightly recessed here. And we're just gonna thread this in here by hand and still until the stack of parts starts to get some tension on it. We'll do the other two rear holes. Move on to the front and just get the bolt started in the mounting post. Also, it's worth mentioning some of the Jettas have a plate, a plastic piece that sits above this valence. And it's a nice idea to just come in there with either a hot knife or a saw and make a small U-shaped cut there, which will allow the plate to uh, not pooch that down. And it gives you a good access point for getting on that bolt. Now we'll just go ahead and 
get the bolt started in our fold over nuts on the FMJ kit. Same thing on the other side. And we just want everything nice and nice and loosey goosey so it can all find its happy spot before we start tightening things down. Next, we're gonna final torque our mounting posts. Again, we wanna make sure that our alignment on our side skirts is nice. This one behind the intercooler bracket is the hardest to get to. Same thing on the other side. Make sure that the uh, angle bracket there is toenailed under the back of that mounting post. Now we're gonna reach in and tighten up our sheet nuts. These don't have to get crazy tight, they just need to get snug down. Just keep things from rattling. Same thing over here. Don't forget to tighten the little guy on that angle bracket. Tighten these guys, seven foot pounds, don't go crazy. And finally, we'll do the uh, five M10s from the bottom. Torque spec on those is 30 foot pounds. If you wanna speed them in with an impact, that's fine, but uh, always, always, always final torque by hand. Okay, so if you didn't get the full metal jacket or if you have a car that's incompatible with full metal jacket, you'll wanna modify your side skirts if you still have them so that you can use them. Basically, the uh, forward mounting post sits right here. And so um, there's, a, there's a mounting provision for this side skirt that's in the way. And so what you do is you come in with the hacksaw and you make a cut here, you just kind of follow this factory line. You can just follow that down until here, and then you make another cut and you come in at the front and you just trim this whole thing off. Same story on the passenger side. You just follow this molded contour down until you get to here, and then you come in from the front and just skim this off. And then in the back, uh, there's a, a tail to this that is in the way um, and so you just again follow the factory contour just straight down and off and uh, it's the same story back here and there's a pole in the bottom of panzer that you can engage the remaining back two screw holes just to keep these guys from from flopping around on you and that's how you uh, modify your stock side skirts work with the panzer so now everything's installed and, and since you took the time to put it all loose and put it all up there loose and get everything started, it, it's, uh, if you need to service the car, it'll just be a matter of taking out the five M10s and the four M6s here and drop that down. And then when you go to put everything back together, everything will just line right up. It'll be real straightforward. That's about it. Thanks for watching.